Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today I want to get back to a promise I made back with the CPU mining hybrid video. How to mine with CPU on Windows 10. Today we start with the easiest ways to do it. Kryptonite Lite because here you can see results even with older or weaker CPUs. Mind that you could still do the same with your GPUs too but main focus will be on CPU today. So first let's take a look at coins and pools. We'll have two different examples today. Firstly Aeon, the best known Kryptonite Lite coin as well as Planet a yet unlisted project which tries to solve crypto's fees and dust problems. Please mind that my videos are only mining advice and never financial advice, but we need some examples to work with. For Aeon, I like Hashvolt Pro because they also offer a multitude of other Kryptonite coins as well as servers for US, EU and Asia. For Plenteum, it's the same, only that we use Virtopia Pool which also offers some other Kryptonite Lite coins, but the processes for both projects are the same. Before we take a look at the software, we'll do some tweaks in Windows which can help us to achieve higher hash rates, namely enable large page file support. This is also important if you want to mine Monero for example. We do this by tweaking our group policies that our miner can use those. Sorry that you are seeing it in German on the screen. In the start menu we click run and in the open box we type gpedit.msc. Then we come to the local group policy editor console, we expand computer configuration, then expand windows setting, expand security settings and then expand local policies. Now all the policies will be displayed in the details panel and in this panel we double click the log pages in memory. In the dialog box we click add user or group then you add the name of the user you're logging into your PC with and with which you will be running the miner. So for example admin. Now you just have to reboot for it to take effect. After that we will take a look at software and we'll be concerned with my all-time classic today XMR stack where we'll also take a look on how to tweak your CPU according to your cores and threads. So a download link can be found in the description, but always use GitHub links if you can. In consequent videos, we will look at other possibilities like GCE Miner, but for now back to Stack. The first time we run Stack, we'll have to configure it a bit. Then it will create our first config files for us, which we can then tweak further. For currency, you will want to type Aeon7, since Kryptonite Lite also forked away from ASICs, and then we give our pool info. So the address directly followed by our our selected port number. Your username is your wallet address and with password you can give a rig identifier as well as an email in order to log in with Hashvolt. You can configure things like minimum payout but you don't have to. You can just monitor it by using your wallet address on pool site. Hashvolt would also offer SSL connections but it works both ways. For nice hash and multiple pools we type N for no 2. At this point the software will already start mining, probably with all of your threads engaged and it might also use your GPUs. Sorry CPU to let you mine while I'm recording. Normally hash rate would be a bit higher, always depending on what your CPU has to chew on in the meantime. You can leave it like this and you would be finished because normally stack is not so bad with its automatic setup but we want to take a look at basic tweaking as well. So when we check our stack folder now we see that new text files have been added. In AMD or Nvidia you can disable the use of GPUs to only use CPU or simply delete the CUDA or OpenCL DLL else to disable your GPUs if needed. In pools and config we have the settings we gave on initial start, so if you want to change those in the future, that's the place to do it. But the CPU text file is the one we are really interested in. Now it will differ a bit from CPU to CPU, so we are interested in your core, thread count as well as your L3 cache size. If you don't know yours, you can simply check it in the task manager. The big advantage from Kryptonite Lite over the classic Kryptonite is that less L3 cache is needed. For Monero, it would be best to have at least 2 megabyte cache per thread you are using. For Kryptonite Lite, 1 megabyte is enough. This is the reason it's better for weaker chips. So here you'll have to do some experimenting. For example, my i7-4790K here is a 4 core 8 thread CPU and it has 8 megabyte of L3 free cache, so mining with all 8 threads is no problem. On Monero on the other hand, only 4 threads would be used in an ideal situation. Lastly, a personal tip, after you have configured everything and you're happy, I always copy my complete stack folder to have an alternative miner. Here I only activate half of the threads compared to going all threads. This is the one I use when doing mundane tasks on the PC because you can't really feel it while doing say normal office work. To my experience, with this setup you'll have a bit more than just half the hash rate. The 
depending on what you are doing. Only when I really leave the PC, I start the full thread miner and leave it running. So that's already it folks, the start of looking into CPU mining more as promised. Because CPUs are so wildly different, we did not look into things as overclocking. But if you have adequate cooling, you can pump out a bit higher numbers. That's already it for this week. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you how you're torturing your CPUs. All the best to you, happy mining and bye! Or nice hash and multiple put the